Bismillahi walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman rabbal alameen Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik wa asa Allah azza wa jal to teach us what is beneficial and to bring us great benefit with what we learn and to make our intentions sound for his sake subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight insha'Allah we're going to be doing just like last week two hadiths we'll do hadith 29 and hadith 30 insha'Allah ta'ala and as we reminded you last week it doesn't mean that we've done two hadiths at the same time that you need to do two hadiths at the same time if you're listening to this lecture or podcast later because you could split them but here for the benefit of everybody who is attending inshallah because everybody has come here to make use of the time we're doing two hadiths because but you could definitely split them you do hadith per week so hadith 29 you finish it apply it practice it then you do hadith 30 inshallah so hadith 29 is where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked a question. And Abu Dharr is the one who's asking him. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, araayta rajula ya'malu al-amala yuhibbuhu al-nasu alayhi. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what if a man does something and for that people like him, love him, he does something and he receives people love because of it. So he said, alayhi salatu was salam, he said, tilka ajilu bushra al mu'min. This is the hastened good news for the believer. This is the hastened good news for the believer. You may have heard this hadith in another narration. That narration is that, O Messenger of Allah, what if somebody does something good and he receives people's praise? So this wording is for, from Ahmad, rahimahullah, in the Musnad. The wording of the other popular wording is, what if somebody does something and he receives people's praise for it? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, this is the hastened good news for the believer. So it's good news in, form of, in terms of praise. Praise, love, love, praise, they are equivalent here. So whether he receives, is receiving praise, he's receiving praise because people love him, because of what he has done. So that becomes for that sahabi an issue or a bit of a problem or perplexing in the sense of you've done it for Allah Azza wa Jal, what do you do when people praise you? So let's inshallah understand this hadith and through it understand a little bit more about love and the things that we were saying about love. So... Love is something that we all need. And it's not possible for us to live without. So you see it, you know, love, recognition, praise, all of these I'm going to say, use for the, same, for the sake of this hadith as synonyms, as interchangeable words, praise, love, recognition, all of these things. We all need them. And you can see it because it's so inborn in, it, in us. You can see it with children. I mean, a child will do something and look at his parents for what? Approval. Is this right? Is this wrong? Are you happy with me? And if they express approval, then the child knows that he is approved, he is celebrated, he's fine, what he has done is fine. So that makes him happy. And the child will continue to do this, to look at the approval of his parents, his mother, his father, people around him, to understand right from wrong, what needs to be done and not, but also understand things about himself. Oh, I'm a good person, or I'm a bad person, I've done good, or I've done bad. So that's also how you reform behavior. So the child within him, within her, early on, they need that love. And they need that praise, right? And what happens to them if you take that love and praise from them? They grow in an imbalanced way. Right? They grow lacking love, seeking it either in the wrong place or because they lack it, they're unable to process it and unable to give it. Okay? There's an imbalance in the, in the person. So we're always are seeking love. 
love as children, but love as teenagers, love even as adults through what we do. And there's a problem here with human love. There's a disadvantage, there's a shortcoming with it that comes with it. Because we are imperfect, the love that we give also has that mark of that imperfection. And of course, I'm saying this because we're going to contrast this with divine love and say divine love is complete. But in order to understand the difference, look at human love, what it can give you, and it can give you a lot. But at the same time, there are things that it cannot give you, things that you cannot expect from it. So for instance, you may love a lot of people, but they may not be ready to love you back. Right? Right? They may not be ready to return that love. And that's evident. That's noticeable. So not everyone who, whom you love loves you back. Or if you love them in, this, in, in a certain amount of love, or a certain degree, they will love in the same degree back. So that's a flaw in human love. Also, they may love you, but they don't know how to express it, or they express it in the wrong way. So... Because they love you, they seek, let's say, for instance, to dominate you. They seek, for instance, to restrict you because they think this is what love is. So not all expressions of love is or are good or are approved or are to your advantage. Sometimes the love is there, but it's excessive. And if there is too much of it, what happens? It backfires, right? Or there's not enough of it. So they love you, but not enough. Or they love you, but they love you way too much. And if a person loves way too much, they could be jealous, they could be possessive. We're going somewhere with this, inshallah. It also, it also could be misapplied. It also be, could be tainted with human emotions and insecurities. So I love you so much, I'm afraid of losing you. No one else can have access to you. There is love, right? But it also what? It's mixed with some negative insecurities that a person may have. So it's not all expressions of love or where, what it reads, human-wise, is, um, is good. And finally, human love is unstable, and that's something that we're going to visit. But a person that you love today, you may not love tomorrow, or vice versa. A person who loves you today may not love you tomorrow. Not for any good reason, but they just simply change. Emotions change. They vary based on the person's circumstances, uh, what I've gone through. All of that is a possibility. So that's human love, and that's the flaw with human love that we are all seeking and we need. But we can, inshallah, try to point all of us to something that is higher. Also something interesting about love that we, what we understand, and we talked about this before, that love can be good and it can be what? It can be bad. Love can unleash the greatest potential in us, and that's what we said, the love of Allah Azza wa is the greatest motivation, but also for the sake of love, you could commit the worst of crimes, right? So you can kill because of love, right? You can kill because of love. You could steal because of love. You could commit terrible crimes because of it, and you can do noble things because of it. It just depends on how you Attach this love. To what are you attaching it to? So there is a human need. Because love on its own is not pure. Love on its own, he is human. And it could be good or bad. So we need to liberate that love from its bad element, connotations, connections. And that can only happen when you link this love to Allah Azza wa so we're still talking about kind of recognition, connection, and praise. If you are only seeking human praise, you're going to be troubled by it and miserable because of it. But we can't live without praise, right? If you're only seeking human recognition, it's going to trouble you and devastate you. But we can't live without recognition. So we need it on a human level, but we can't stop there. So how do I liberate myself from that dependence? How do I liberate my love, right, from its imperfection? You link it to Allah Azza wa Jal, and then your love can be free. Free from dependence on humans only and free from your own fluctuations. So I can love for Allah Azza wa Jal, and that love can be constant, judged by 
and motivated by Allah Azza wa not my personal gains and losses. This is how you liberate love. And if that love of yours is going to push you in the wrong direction, you have Allah Azza wa to tell you, no, this is haram, and this is haram, and this is not allowed. So you know that you've crossed a line. This is bad type of love. So you know that you need to retract. You need to combat, and you need to re-understand that love. You need to apply that love correctly. And that can only happen if Allah Azza wa Jal is guiding that love. Now what this hadith does, right, is that it links human love to divine love. Human praise to divine approval. Because the Sahabi is asking, O Prophet of Allah, if I'm being praised or if people love me because of the things that I'm doing, what do I do with this? And that is here the, the dilemma of ikhlas, sincerity, right? So you're doing something and you're trying your best to be sincere. You're praying, you're fasting, you're reading the Quran, you're donating, you're doing any and all of these things and some more, da'wah, etc. You're speaking publicly, you're writing, and you're trying your best for this to be sincere for Allah's sake. Then people take note of it. Then people naturally will praise it, will assess it. So if I'm receiving their praise and I become dependent on their praise, will that not sway my ikhlas, take it away from Allah Azza wa to expectations, to human liking what I'm doing and because they like it, because they praise me, I will continue to do it versus Allah Azza wa That's the dilemma. How do I process all of this? So the Prophet وسلم, is saying in this hadith, no, link and see their love as a product of Allah's love, their praise as a product of Allah's approval. Because in everything that we're doing, and if you think about it, we're always doing something seeking recognition and love and praise. If no one recognizes what you're doing, you probably won't do it. Right? Like no one at all. You probably won't do it. So the Prophet وسلم, and here in general in Islam, you transition through the, uh, that understanding from human recognition to divine recognition, from human praise to divine praise, from human love to divine love. Not that you need none of these things, element, human elements, but that you're not dependent on them. As I said, Everything that you do, you're looking for recognition. Imagine if you think that you're funny, you tell a joke and no one laughs. Would you tell jokes after that? You need somebody to tell you what? You're funny. Then you'll know you're funny. That's the only way that you know you're funny. If somebody laughs. If you keep telling jokes and nobody laughs, what happens? You know that you're not funny. Right? Like, uh, how do you know that you're smart? Somebody has to tell you, right? Because everybody on their own, they believe that they are smart, right? But how do I know? Someone has to come and tell you, by the way, you're really intelligent, you're really smart. You'll be able to solve this, you know this. Then you will know. It's that recognition that lets you know that you are something. And if no one recognizes you, right, then you will not know yourself. So you need that reflection to come your way. Uh, what if you do something and no one likes it? What is that? Will you do that again? Typically, will you do it? No. So, as human beings, we're always looking for that feedback. And sometimes you, look, you can look for it in the right place and sometimes in the wrong place. So if you're looking for that feedback among family who are wise, among friends who are wise, who could be trusted, then you know what is right and what is wrong. But you could look for it in all the wrong places. If you have wrong friends, bad company, then what are they going to motivate? All the wrong beliefs and practices. So they'll push you in the wrong direction. Uh, what makes social media popular, especially when you post, is that you receive what? All of these things that we talked about. You receive recognition. So the more clicks, the more likes, the more views, what does that mean? I am something. I'm popular, I'm important, I'm intelligent, I know how to produce content, and if they hit like, it means what? Oh, my dress, 
the way that I'm dressing today, the way that I'm speaking, what I said, this is valuable. You recognize value through people's reaction. But that's looking for approval in the wrong place, right? Anonymous, unknown people are judging you and directing you to do an undo. Well, on the one hand, um, this is expected because this is what we're looking for. On the other hand, as we said, this is miserable because your primary goal then would be, I need to please people. I need to find affection among them. I need to have them love me and like me. And one great pitfall of that is on page 308. There's a hadith from the Prophet والسلام, where he said, مَنِ الْتَمَسَ رِضَ اللَّهِ بِسَخَطِ النَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَرْضَى عَنْهُ النَّاسِ وَمِنَ الْتَمَسَ رِضَ النَّاسِ بِسَخَطِ اللَّهِ سَخِطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْخَطَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ He says, the one who seeks Allah's approval, though it is upsetting to people, Allah will be pleased with him and will have people or make people be pleased with him. And the one who seeks people's approval, though it is upsetting to Allah, Allah will be upset with him and he will make people upset with him. So if I'm seeking, seeking primarily, I've trained myself when that's the only thing I worry about, people's approval, it will come a time when that approval must clash with what Allah loves. Have you faced that in your life? Must have. People want me to do this, Allah wants me to do something else. What do you follow? Now it's easier to say, I'll follow what people want. And why is that? Because their reward is immediate. Right? Because they, if they like you, they will show it immediately. If they want to praise you, they'll show you immediately. If Allah likes you, if he wants to praise you, okay, I've done something, I've just prayed. Okay, where's the, where's the praise? Where's the recognition? Have you seen anything yet? You haven't. So it's delayed or hidden. So it's far more difficult to please Allah Azza wa versus pleasing people. But here... The Prophet ﷺ gives you something that should kind of cheer you up and terrify you at the same time. Because what he's saying is what? The thing that you're worrying about is going to happen. What is it? I'm afraid that people will hate me. Isn't it? I said, no, it's going to happen. So if you please Allah, you say, okay, what do I gain if I please Allah? I say, if you please Allah and you upset people when there is no other choice but to upset people, and you upset people, don't worry about it. Allah will be happy with you. And then if he says, then what about people? He says, he will make them happy with you. Even if after some time. Right? So you're not going to lose their approval. They're not going to lose their love. If they matter, if they matter, there will be disbelievers who will hate you no matter what you do, right? If they matter, they will love you. But he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, also that, but if you please them and you upset Allah Azza wa what did you gain now? I thought I gained their approval and their love. He's saying, no. Allah up there is not happy with you. And if he's not happy with you, you wait until they also will be unhappy with you. So you lost everything. And this highlights also that, as we said, people's love is fickle. It doesn't stay doesn't stay. You have it, you lose it. You don't understand why they started to hate you, but they hate you. And we do this as human beings with celebrities. You build them, you build them up, media or people or whatever. You build them up, build them up, build them up. And, they're, and when they reach the height of their fame, what did they start doing to them? Tear them apart. Right? So why? What did they do? Nothing. He's still basically the same person. But now you have too much money. Now you have too much fun. Now you know you're marrying. Now you're doing this, doing that. We just don't like you for whatever reason. And maybe there's, there are reasons, hidden reasons that we do not know. But build up, tear apart. Build up, tear apart. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. And now that person that we loved so much, we hate, so we loathe so much. We want to see them fall apart without sympathy, without mercy. 
So if you think that because you're famous, your people like you, really like you, you have to think again. If you think that with fame you're buying people's love, you have to think again. People cannot be trusted as people to love you. You can only trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to understand if you are working for Allah azza wa jal, doing things for Allah azza wa jal, when someone praises you, don't disconnect that praise from Allah and start working for people. So um, think of anything Islamic that you might be doing. You recite the Quran and your recitation is beautiful or you're memorizing the Quran and you're on maybe to finish the Quran or take any other example that personally relate to you and you're doing it for Allah Azza wa Jal. And people start giving you or heaping praise on you and you start finding comfort in that praise, expecting that praise, waiting for that praise. And when they praise you, you move. And when not, you don't move. You don't do. You're lazy if you don't receive praise. Then you realize, oh, my intention is different now. I was for Allah before, but now somehow I was diverted. No, you want to take that phrase and connect it and link it back to Allah Azza wa Jal as the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam said. You need recognition, you need praise. How is the Divine going to communicate with you? How is Allah Azza wa Jal going to communicate with you? He's not going to talk to you, right? How is He going to communicate with you? He says, consider then this phrase that is being sent to you as a message from Allah Azza wa that He is happy with you. As long as what you're doing is right, of course. We'll talk some about some of these qualifications. But consider it, link it back to Allah Azza wa And then your heart is not attached to a person, not reliant on the person, but rather on Allah Azza wa So now you're not afraid. What if I upset that person and he stops loving me? Oh, he's not loving me because of him. He's loving me because of Allah. Make Allah happy, then don't worry about this person. You see? So you put it in context. Don't worry about the person. So now I have to keep pleasing him or doing things that he likes or she likes? Don't worry about the person. Worry about the one who sent that person to praise you. To tell you what you've done is right, keep going. Or that he loves you, so maybe this is a sign, as the hadith says, of Allah's love. Hastened good news. Before you meet Allah Azza wa Jal, you receive it in the dunya. So on page 308, you see an example of the link between what people admire, what people love, and the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Suhail ibn Abi Salih, he said that, and this is narrated in, in Muslim, he said, when we were in Arafah, and this is at the season of Hajj, and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who was an Umayyad Khalifa, or became an Umayyad Khalifa. He was leading that season of Hajj. So when he passed by, people stood up to look at him, to get a glimpse of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. So he said, Suhail ibn Abi Saleh, he said, I said to my father when I saw this, he said, Father, I believe that Allah loves Umar. He said, I believe that Allah loves Umar. He says, how do you know that? He says, because I see that people love him. He says, I believe that Allah loves Umar. He says, why? Because I see people love him. Of course, Umar on his own, in what he does, is worthy of, re of receiving that love. What is he? He's a pious person. He's a good Khalifa. He's a good Amir. He's a good person. He's worthy of receiving that love. Then he said, when I see people love him, and now they're loving him for the right reasons, then you know that, that is a reflection, or you suspect that, you hope that, that's a reflection of Allah's love. Now, I know he said, rahimahullah, um, an explanation of a hadith, and this is something important to keep in mind. That's the first qualification that we're going to mention. He says, هذا كله إذا حميده الناس This is on page 310. هذا كله إذا حميده الناس من غير تعرض منه لحمدهم وإلا فالتعرض مذموم He says this, meaning that praise is a reflection of Allah's approval, a reflection of Allah's love. He says this is all is the case if he receives people's praise without him seeking it, without him wanting it. 
Otherwise, if he seeks it, if he exposes himself to be praised, if he wants it from them, that's not it. This is a disliked behavior. That's not an indication anymore of Allah's love. So you see the difference between the two? The first is not anticipating, is not seeking, doesn't want people's praise, but it comes. But if a person puts himself in a situation to be praised, and people praise him, and he says, MashaAllah, this is from Allah. Allah loves me because of it. This is no. And this is like money. And when you'll be blessed if you have money and when you won't. So Hakib ibn Hizam, radiyallahu anhu, he said, سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأعطاني ثم سألته فأعطاني ثم سألته فأعطاني ثم قال So Hakim he said I asked the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام and he gave me and I asked him for what? Money. So I asked him he gave me I asked him he gave me I asked him he gave me and he said in the third he says يا حكيم إن هذا المال خضرة حلوة he says, this money is beautiful and sweet. Money is what? Khadira, green. Green means beautiful, to look at. All types of money, beautiful to look at. Hulwa, sweet. So beautiful to look at, and also when you consume it, there's a sweetness to it. So he's saying it's very attractive. That's what money is. It's very attractive. فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ بِسَخَاوَةِ نَفْسٍ بُورِكَ لَهُ فِيهِ He says, whoever takes it with a generous spirit, then money will be blessed for him. What is a generous spirit? Yani you take it without greed and looking forward to it. Halal money. But you take it without greed and without depending on it, looking forward to it. He says, it will be blessed for you. وَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ بِإِشْرَافِ نَفْسٍ لَمْ يُبَارَكْ لَهُ فِيهِ But the one who takes it with greed, with anticipation, he will not have it blessed. وَكَانَ كَالَّذِي يَأْكُلُ وَلَا يَشْبَعْ And he will be like a person who eats but is never full. وَالْيَدُ الْعُلْيَا خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الْيَدِ السُّفْلَى And the upper hand is better than the lower hand. And what is the upper hand? That's the giving hand. And the lower hand is the receiving hand. Meaning he's telling Hakim, رضي الله عنه, be the giver, not the taker. So he gave him, he gave him, and he gave him, and gave him this advice. And he says, now it's up to you how you want to live the rest of your life. Be the giver, not the taker. So don't keep asking. And also, when you take money, and that could include what? Your salary, and my salary. Any halal money that we receive. It depends on how you receive that check. If you receive it with greed, you can't wait until you get it. Huh? and you're panting after money, he says there will be no barakah in it, even though it is what? Halal. But the attitude is an attitude of greed, acquisition, right? Stinginess, so there will be no barakah in it. But rather you should take it how? Bi sakhawati nafs, with a generous spirit. It's coming from Allah Azza wa not from so and so. And it will be used in ways that please Allah Azza wa Jal, halal ways. But there's no greed. You're not, your life is not going to end if you don't have it. It's going to come your way. I don't have to run after it. That's the attitude. He says that generous spirit will put barakah in that wealth. So here with this money, which resembles here that praise, with this money, if you seek it, what happens? I'm not saying seeking it, you can work. That's seeking money. But I say beyond that, you don't crave it. So if you crave it, you run after it, there's no barakah in it. But if you sit back and wait for it to come after you've worked, you know, after you've invested in all of this, you sit back and you wait for it to come, then it will be blessed. So the same thing with praise. Don't seek it, don't wait for it, don't anticipate it do the things that you need to do for Allah's sake, then if it comes your way, you take it. And you take it how? By saying that this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. But also keep in mind, 
Uh, just a hadith also connected to it before I move to this point, uh, where the Prophet وسلم, said about money, إِذَا سَاقَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ رِزْقًا مِنْ غَيْرِ مَسْأَلَةٍ وَلَا إِشْرَافِ نَفْسٍ فَخُذْهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعْطَاكَهُ He says, if Allah sends you provision without you asking for it, and without greedily craving it, without greedily craving it, then take it because Allah gave it to you. So this is, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam to Umar. He once gave Umar money. He said, O Prophet of Allah, I don't need it. Give it to somebody else. So he told him what? He said, if some money comes to you without you asking for it and anticipating for or anticipating it, take it. This is a provision from Allah Azza wa that had come to you. Don't resist it. So two things. You didn't ask and you didn't think about it. You didn't anticipate. It came to you, take it. That's the direction of the Prophet because it came to you without any effort, without any craving. You say, take it. No? Now the qualification to the praise that we talked about is not all praise or love is good. So you see, okay, if... If people praise people, does that mean that Allah loves them no matter what they're doing? If people love other people because of what they're doing, does that mean divine love no matter what they're doing? No. It means that this person has to be pleasing to Allah, righteous. What they're doing has to be righteous. And the person who is expressing that love and they're expressing that praise have to be Righteous in that love, righteous in that praise, expressing it for the right reasons. Otherwise, celebrities, okay, who are even non-Muslim, will be the most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal, because a lot of people seemingly love them and praise them. A lot of people will be sad when they die, but not sad if one of us dies. Does that mean that they are more beloved to Allah? So what are we considering here? What praise and what love, who praises and who loves, and the status of the praise of person who is being praised and who is being loved. So if, they are, if there is, let's say, not only we're talking about a um, non-Muslims, right? Let's say that there is a Muslim, but they are sinners, public sinners, and they die. And a lot of people feel sad that they've passed away. Is that a sign of Allah's love? Yes? No, can be. If people praise them, mashallah, they're this and this and this, but they are public sinners, is that a sign of Allah's love? No. Because it depends who's giving that praise. If there are Muslims who are innovators, religious, it gets trickier now. Religious, but they are innovators. Mubtadi'ah. So seemingly to the public, who cannot differentiate between sunnah and bid'ah, he's religious, mashallah. He's popular, mashallah. Dies, they he prays on him. Does that matter? The same way it doesn't. That's trickier, by the way, because seemingly he's religious. But it matters. And it matters where it comes from and who is receiving it. Okay? But at least let's understand the premise of all of this. Not all praise and not all love. Um, Now, so the last point, inshallah, when it comes to, uh, to this particular hadith is to remember that we really are motivated by love and we really are motivated by praise and by recognition. So Allah Azza wa Jal and His Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, and they, this is, as we said, absolutely natural. They do want you to move from the human realm to the divine realm from seeing what people can give you to seeing Allah Azza wa Jal, from motivated, being motivated by, oh, so-and-so loves, loves me, so I will do whatever, and so-and-so praises me, I'll do whatever, to saying that, what about Allah Azza wa Jal, and what about his praise, and what about his love? Because that is love that you can trust, love that doesn't change, love that will always keep giving you fuel to do more and more and more, and as there is no end to Allah's love, there is no end to the motivation that Allah can give you. Every single day, you can get more of his love, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll never, he'll never grow tired of you. He'll never grow tired of giving you. And you'll never go ti grow tired of loving Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as you are pushing and resisting the shaitan. The obstacles that we fear are obstacles that we put in, in our way because of the shaitan. But if you want the greatest motivation, right? love is a great, the greatest motivator. If we want the greatest motivation 
in love, it is the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? And you can see how praise moves us. You could be so tired, you know, you don't have energy. Somebody comes and gives you a remark about your figure, about your at work, about this and that, and you have energy all of a sudden. And you want to do more of that, right? That's what praise does, and that's what love does. So if you want more of it, if you hear something coming from a human being, remember, remember Allah's praise, and remember Allah's recognition, and remember Allah's love, and connect what is on this earth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and say, perhaps this, and I hope this, is a reflection of what Allah thinks of me, and he wants from me. So that will give you a greater or the greatest motivation. But if you're just simply focused, as a lot of us, you know, it happens to a lot of us, to the best of us. If you're just simply focused on human love or human praise, you'll move as long as they give you. And you'll stop when they stop giving you. So, salah, Quran, ibadah, hijab, zakah, whatever it is. As long as people like it, I'll do it. And we have to move beyond that, inshallah. Hadith, which is the 30th hadith. In it, the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, this is page 313. He said, Inna min ibadi lahi la unasa, ma hum bi anbiya'a wa la shuhada'a, yagbituhum al anbiya'a wa shuhada'a yawm al qiyamati bi makanihim min Allahi ta'ala. He says there are servants of Allah who are not prophets or martyrs. But the prophets and the martyrs will admire them on the day of judgment because of how close they are to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because saying their position, how close they are to Allah Azza wa Jal, even the prophets of Allah when they see them and the shuhada, the martyrs when they see them, they will admire them. And al-ghibta here is to wish for what they have, something similar to it, without wanting this to, um, wanting them to lose whatever they have. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, can you tell us who they are? قَالَ هُمْ قَوْمٌ تَحَابُوا بِرُوحِ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ أَرْحَامٍ بَيْنَهُمْ وَلَىٰ أَمْوَالٍ يَتَعَاطَوْنَهَا He says, they are people who love each other because of Allah Azza wa Jal, without family ties between them, and without money that they exchange. So they're not loving each other because of family ties or because of money. فَوَاللَّهِ إِنَّ وُجُوهَهُمْ لَنُورُ وَإِنَّهُمْ عَلَىٰ نُورُ He says, by Allah, or I swear by Allah, their faces are lit, they're full of light, and they are sitting or standing on light, like pulpits of light or elevated on light. لا يخافون إذا خاف الناس ولا يحزنون إذا حزين الناس. He says they're not afraid when people are afraid, and they're not sad when people are sad. And then he said, and then he read عليه الصلاة والسلام the following ayah: ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Indeed, the awliya of Allah, there is no fear for them, and they don't experience sadness. So. Again here, this is a, it's related to the recognition that we talked about because these people on the Day of Judgment, they're being recognized. And you are, wallahu a'lam, being told all of this in case you are looking for recognition and all of us are and you're saying you're anonymous here. I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and no one knows about it. And these people are being recognized for the good and the bad that they're doing. But you feel inside that there is no, there's something missing when no one knows about you. And you want someone to know about you. So you're asking, if I were to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the things that I'm doing, the good things that I'm trying to do, what do I get? What do I receive? Would Allah azza wa jal honor me, receive me, praise me, recognize me? So the Prophet والسلام, is telling you about that recognition. Because Allah wants to show people then, but also He wants to show us now that this is what you do, or this is what you get if you do what they have done. This is how Allah will reward you. This is how you'll be elevated, how you'll be celebrated, how other people will know about you when you do these things that Allah wants from you. So you can delay that need for recognition. You can imagine it, you can visualize it. I'm not going to have it now, but by idhnillah, I hope I will have it then, and that's what it's going to look like. So when you have that in your heart, maybe you can be patient. 
Maybe you won't need people around you to tell you you are the greatest or to praise you all the time. Because you know in your mind, there's going to come a time when Allah Azza wa is going to do this and that to me, when he will elevate me and honor me, when people will realize the good things that I've done. Not that I need them to realize, but I want them to understand the sacrifice. I want them to understand the pain. I want them to understand these things. There's going to come a time when they'll understand it. Everybody will see this. And imagine being in a position where you have the prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal admiring your status. Or think of the prophets, Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. They look at what you have and they admire what you have, telling you that what you have is great. That's recognition again, okay, from these prophets. That tells us that you can, again, just like with love, that we talked about, you could look for love in the wrong places and you can look for recognition in the wrong places. And that's why we do the things that we do, good or bad. So if a person joins a gang, let's say, what do they join, join a gang for? For all kind of the, uh, the, I don't know, for all the fame that they're going to receive? Partly. But it's mainly in the beginning because they feel accepted. They feel recognized. They feel supported, right? And so you realize that a lot of things that we do that are bad, we do because of those social connections and recognitions. So we always need them. And it's good, by the way, and that's something that I didn't put in the book. Um, When we talk about human praise, human praise, human praise, and sometimes human praise is excessive, at the same time, it's needed. Because you have to acknowledge people around you, right? When they do something right. You have to tell them at times, Jazakumullah khaira, what you've done is good. Because they have to know it's good, and that is a motivator. So, yeah, we are saying human praise is not reliable, human love is not reliable, but at the same time, people around you need to hear that they've done well. They need to hear that praise from you. And remind them, that that could be connected to Allah Azza wa Jal so that they don't you know, grow drunk on just consuming human praise. If only if you praise me, then I will do. I remind them that may Allah Azza wa Jal accept that from you. This could be good news from Allah Azza wa Jal because people like what you have done, right? And to also know that at times you will do things that are unpopular, right? That are pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal and you have to suffer through human rejection and lack of popularity, right? So if what you're doing is right, just like the hadith we talked about, if you do what is pleasing to Allah, even though you're going to upset people, sometimes you will do things that will get you in trouble with your family, with your friends, uh, with other Muslims, and they are right. And most people are wrong. And if you know that you're right, you can't compromise your position if you're confident. You can't compromise your position because people hate what you're doing. You got to do it for Allah's sake. And then eventually Allah will bring them back, will bring that love that you need from them. But we need to let people know that they've done well when they have done well. So I just wanted to add that uh, in case uh, we missed that thing. So looking for recognition in the right uh, thing, in the right place and the wrong place. And we know that something is right and something is wrong when people celebrate it. Right? Just like the recognition that we talked about. So why do people, um, why do people celebrate fame or celebrate certain possess- uh, professions? It's because they see other people celebrating it recognizing it, praising it, so they recognize, I need to be this to receive that. I need to receive, be this to receive fame or to receive money or to receive love. So whatever we are celebrating becomes success. What if you consider, for instance, all of a sudden we all decide that doctors are losers? Would, they, would anybody want to become a doctor? Nobody. So what, what changed? Perception. Recognition. Right? So it's the same thing. The world today is the way that it is because we recognize the wrong things as valuable. Globally, right? Collectively. And that's why people seek these wrong things. If we redefine what success is, 
then the rest of us will seek righteousness because that's what success is. So success today is not praying. Success today is not honesty. Success today is not humility. It's the opposite of these things. And because we are celebrating these opposites, people seek them. If we ourselves, now wait for somebody else to do it. If we ourselves, we redefine what success is, then everybody will be seeking that success, right? And we understand here from this hadith, right? Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ, he said that they love each other for Allah's sake, not because of family connections and not because of money. So money is the bond today. And success means competing to get more of it. Yet success for Allah جل, and success in the eyes of the prophets of Allah جل, is not about competition for money, is it? You're not being elevated in the akhirah for it. In the dunya, yes. But in the akhirah, not. What elevates you? Loving each other for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, despite the fact that you may not have money. The successful in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal, may look like what? Like people who are poor, don't have fancy homes, fancy cars, fancy rides, fancy clothes, brands of this and brands of that. They're not recognized, they're anonymous, people don't know them, people don't care about them. Yet Allah Azza wa deems them to be successful. And these are not the ones that people know about or when they look at, they deem to be successful. So the Prophet ﷺ, for instance, said in a hadith, رُبَّ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ Okay. لا يؤبه له لو أقسم على الله لأبره He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, the meaning of that hadith, رُبَّ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ Unkempt person with dusty clothes, dusty body, no one pays attention to him. Were he to swear upon Allah for Allah to do something, Allah would fulfill it. And he says, مَتْفُوعٌ بِالْأَبْوَابِ Meaning no one opens doors for him. And now how do you know if someone is successful today? He knocks on a door and it opens. Right? And you want, in your mind, you want to be that person. You want to be the person who has all these connections. I can pick up the phone and say, can you do this for me? And it gets done. That's success, that's power. Yeah, the Prophet ﷺ is saying that's not success, that's worldly connection. But you want to understand success, and now he changes that perception. He says this person that you don't pay attention to, he has the greatest access because of his iman. And what is that greatest access? If he asks Allah in that specific formula, Ya yeah, Allah, I swear upon you that you should do this, he does it for him. Uh, now, most people don't have that privilege, right? But he has it. So Allah Azza wa Jal redefines success to be what? Success with him. Even though in the dunya you might be a failure, not because of your own fault. People look at you and they consider that you're a failure. It just didn't work out for you. You tried, it didn't work out for you. It's, I'm not preaching that we should fail in the dunya to succeed in the akhirah. You could succeed here and succeed there, right? But I'm saying that you could be, in people's perception, in many people's perception, you could be a failure in the dunya. What do you have? You don't own your own home. You don't own your own car. You don't travel. You don't have a lot of savings in the bank. You don't have a degree. You don't this. You tried, but it didn't work out for you. But... There's something else that you're doing that they don't know about, and that is what? The pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, which everybody has access to. You don't need connections. You don't need degrees. You just need effort. And so that is success for Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is success for the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So does it matter then if people don't know you, if Allah Azza wa Jal will do this to you in the next life, in front of everybody? Does it matter if people here do not know you, if Allah knows you, right? And that really, because you could go, you could be like, you could go on social media and you could post things and you say, how, could, how come people don't react? Yet they are reacting to so-and-so. What does that mean? So people don't know me. I must be this and I must be that. I must be lacking in these ways, whereas those people are not. How come people have, are so successful? How come they can get married and have kids and they could travel and they could do all of these things and I couldn't? So does it matter if you have all these things but don't have Allah? Or don't have any of these things but you have Allah? Does it really matter? 
So you have to know what really matters. Because if you have Allah Azza wa Jal, then all of these things are yours. If not in the dunya, then when? In the akhirah. All of them, without exception, all of these things, including here, fame. Not that you should work for fame, but if you, that kind of is something that worries you, saddens you, he says, okay, fine, right? There's going to come a time, bi'ithnillah azza wa jal, when you will be known. And that's when Allah azza wa jal elevates you. But you want to ask yourself, why did they get elevated so high? Like, what did they do? So we know the sacrifice of the prophets of Allah. We know. Okay. And we know the sacrifice of the martyrs, as shuhada. They lost their lives. We know. So what is the sacrifice of these people? They love each other for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal exclusively, not for the sake of kinship and not for the sake of money. And they continue to do this throughout their lives until they die. Which means that this requires a lot of sacrifice. To be upon the straight path that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal and not be tempted not to go right and not to go left and to keep doing things for Allah's sake Day in and day out, day in and day out, year after year. Is that easy? Is it? No. But when you keep doing it, you're going to be swimming against the tide, against the current, opposite everybody else. And you're going to be called names. And people will think that you're stupid, unwise, foolish. Right? You're missing opportunities. And these opportunities could be a lot of haram in them, but how come you're staying far and you're not taking advantage of A, B, and C? How come everybody's moving ahead and you're, you're yet you are in the same place? How come, how come, and how come? How come people love for this and love for that? And you love for Allah, Azza wa right? So how come you spend all that time in the masjid? How come you're wearing hijab? How come you're concealing your beauty? Let everybody see how beautiful you are. You're still young, right? How come you're not as successful? All these questions that will come to you and try to tempt you. Okay? But then if you resist all of this and increase your iman and keep fighting and sacrificing and striving and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it even when it's really hard and you are alone and you're mocked and you feel like a stranger, right? Gharib. What is wrong with you? Okay? And you feel like that, but you continue to do it, then you receive this. That's why they, ri they, are, they rise this high. Of course, they're not higher than the prophets, and they're not higher than the martyrs, right? But, well, martyrs, possible. They could be equivalent or higher, possibility, but definitely not higher than the prophets. So the prophets, when they admire them, it doesn't mean that the prophets will have something equivalent or less. It just means that this is something incredible and beautiful. But they've risen this high because of their sacrifices. And that's why also the prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, um, there's light on their face. Because what does that reflect? The light of what? Iman. There's light on their face. They're emanating light. Because there's light inside. And there's some of that in the dunya, but it's fully on full display in the akhirah. But there's some of that in the dunya. We could almost see light coming from somebody's face because of their iman. Wallahu a'lam. We're not, we're not going to judge that that person is in jannah. But you kind of see it sometimes, right? But on the day of judgment, it will be fully on, on full display. And the beautiful thing here, he said, alayhi salatu was salam, he says, they're not afraid when people are afraid, and they're not sad when people are sad. And that is definitely 100% on the day of judgment, in the akhirah, but a portion of it is in the dunya as well. Because in the akhirah, they're not afraid when people are afraid, because where are they going? To Jannah. So there's no fear. And they're not sad when the rest are sad. Why? Because Allah removes that sadness. And he gives them everything that they want. So there's no reason to be sad. Right? 
So the greatest, maybe, uh, hardship, maybe, that we face in this life are these two things. Sadness and fear. Right? Isn't it? I think it is. Sadness and fear. Because you're trapped between two things, past and future. And you're in the present between these two things. The past brings what? Sadness. And the future brings fear. So how do you overcome this? So we know that the people on the day of judgment, when they have this assurance from Allah, Azzajal, will have no fear and no sadness. Can we have some of that in the dunya? Yeah. You can. When you trust him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you rely on him, and you attach yourself to him, bring yourself close to him, and know what is coming next, then you will lose some of that sadness or a lot of it. And you will lose some of that fear or a lot of it. Because he say, if Allah is with me, I have nothing to fear. If Allah will assist me, I don't have to be worried about anything. Tomorrow, Allah will take care of it. As he took care of me yesterday, he'll take care of me tomorrow and the day after. What if this happens or that happens? Let it happen. I'll ask Allah for support and Allah will assist me. I'll rely on him and he'll be sufficient for me. Does that not remove a lot of fear? Done. The shaitan will come after a few hours, will whisper again. Then you have to fight him again. But that's the battle. And as far as sadness, why did that happen? That was terrible. That was this, that was that. But you say, it had to happen. There was wisdom in it. Allah wanted it this way. And Allah will compensate me for whatever I went through. Done. Forget about it. Done. No sadness. If you lost something, Allah will give it to you. We'll replace it. We'll compensate. Done. There's no sadness. So we could lose a lot of that. Like the people of Jannah will lose all of it. The closer we are to Allah Azza wa So if you want something from Allah, this hadith is telling you Allah will give it to you. And if you want recognition, if you want love, you want motivation, Prophet Sallallahu is telling you that Allah will elevate you to the highest ranks on light, on minbar or manabir min nur, on pulpits of light. If you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you love for his sake and you love another for his sake, not because of anything that they will give you, but you look at that person and you say, that person seems to be so pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and I love Allah and I will love him because of that. I'm not going to gain anything from him, but you'll gain anything, everything from Allah Azza wa Jalla because of it. So this is inshallah it for tonight and let me know if you have um, any questions inshallah. Give you a couple of minutes, inshallah. And meanwhile, we'll check if there's any. Oh, there are some few online questions, actually. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anything here so far? Okay. Okay. So there's a good question, how do we balance not wanting reliance on people but not doing it overly, I mean not being excessive, as Allah created us to help each other too? Because some help, so we need some help and we need some um, and we need to accept. Of course, it's impossible for you to live isolated from people. You need people, right? You need the help of your parents, your kids, your spouse, your neighbor, you need that. So how do you balance it? Balance it by, first of all, minimizing it so that if you don't need it, you don't seek it. If you could do things on your own, you do things on your own. But then there are things that you can't do on your own, and you realize that, then you can ask for help. Definitely you can ask for help. And you ask for help believing that, ultimately, Allah is the helper, not the person, but being also grateful at the same time that they decided to help. So if I'm asking you for help, give me a ride, do this and do that. Again, attach your heart to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah is the one who allowed them to help, wanted them to help. Move their hearts so they could help you. So attach your heart to Allah Azza wa Jalla, not people, but also be grateful. Because they could have said no. So you have to also thank people. So it doesn't mean don't ask people for help. Okay? You need the doctor, you need the plumber. You need, you need people around you. 
So you can ask for, uh, people for help when you need that help, inshallah, or if they offer it. Okay, if they offer it, you could, you could accept their help, inshallah. But again, it's just about uh, attachment of the heart. How do we recognize it? It is from Allah through people. You cannot be 100% sure if people praise you, oh, this is definitely proof. You be, can be hopeful. If you, be, you want to be more confident, analyze what you have done. Is it you know, righteous? Analyze the um, praise. Is it coming from someone who's righteous and knowledgeable? And then you'll understand how much credence you should give, how much, um, uh, how much you should trust that praise. Does it come from Allah Azza wa Jal? Or is it a sign of Allah's love or not? So, you understand? So, you gotta like, you gotta judge. Thank you. So you gotta understand, right, um, the action, whether it's righteous, and who is praising you, and then you'll understand, inshallah, how much of it you should trust or not. Um, now if we do sadaqa jariya, for example, a well in their name, or someone who has, for someone who has passed away, do they still get the reward for it? So what I understand from it, please correct my understanding if it's incomplete. Um, if you do sadaqa jariya for someone, um, a well, do they get, and, and they pass away, or if they've passed away, do they get the reward for it? Yes. So if somebody, let's say somebody passed away, and you want to help them, you want to benefit them, um, you could donate on their behalf, and that donate could be just one sadaqa and it's done, or sadaqa jariya, a continuous charity, and that continuous charity will be recorded for them as long as that charity is ongoing, inshallah. How to balance uh, uh, between when, as a Muslim, you should... So I'm going to try to read this, and as I read it, understand it. How to balance... She's using qismat and nasib, kind of what Allah destines in daily living and differentiate between haram and halal when as a Muslim you always or everything in a position was to try to have a blessing of Allah in everything you do. Um, okay, I'm trying to understand it. So, so by meaning... The last, I don't understand the last part of it. The last part of it. Okay, I don't understand the second part of it, inshallah. If you can just rewrite it, just the second, like, help me understand the second part, inshallah. Okay. 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 So the question here, uh, if it's from a sister, is that if uh, we are reciting the Quran at home, do we need to wear hijab to recite it? No. We don't need to have the hijab to recite the Quran at home. Right? She said, we ha I have wudu, but do I need to wear the hijab? No, you don't need to wear the hijab. Um, is a question sometimes when we praise, we harm the person. How do we balance that we want to give the career of a good news for the person, but we do not want to harm that person? How to balance in praising? So how to be balanced in your praise? Uh, you don't be excessive. Um, you don't uh, overpraise. Um, uh, you do it in moderation. And you do it also in ways, as long as you think it's helpful, as long as you think it's motivating, then you do it. And when you think it's not, when it's excessive, when it's counterproductive, then you don't. Um, I don't have a formula. I think it varies from one person to the other based on the action and based on you as well. So as long as you think that it is useful, you do. When you think it's excessive, it's too much, then you kind of hold back a little bit. Alaikum <laughs> salam No, 
Naam, naam, barakallahu fiki. So the sister's comment is that uh, she's saying, can we uh, incorporate in what we've said the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and mu'minu al-qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al-mu'min al-da'if wa fi kullin khayr. Was this not a hadith that we've uh, studied in the book? We studied it this in the book, right? Remember, guys? Yeah. Remember that? We studied that? Al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun. Can someone tell me what, what hadith that was? Um, we didn't do that? We did or we didn't? So I, I have people who are saying we did. Okay. Because the reason, I mean, I remember that because uh, it says there, وَأَحَبُّ إِلَى الله. The, the strong believer um, is better and more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal than the weak believer. طيب, anyone remember what we said about the strength in that hadith? Yeah, it's like a pop quiz that nobody had, <laughs> nobody anticipated. Anyone remember what we said about uh, the, the strength in that hadith? Al-mu'minu al-qawi, what type of strength we said that is? Yeah. Iman, right? Remember, it's the strength of Iman. Is it physical strength or uh, material strength? Yeah? Yes or no? No, right? Yeah, no. So it's not physical strength and not material strength. Though, we're not saying that it's not important. Right? Because Allah Azza wa says, وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةِ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ Prepare for them whatever you can of strength. So we understand that Muslims need to have material strength. That hadith, though, is not about material strength. Al-Mu'min al-Qawi, it's not about material strength. It's not like go to the gym and build up your muscles and then Allah loves you more. Or become, have more money and Allah will love you more. It's not about that. Better and more beloved in your iman because you are as a mu'min. But Muslims and believers, they need material strength. So they, we need have to have some people who have money. Otherwise, how do you build anything? We need some people who will be physically strong. We need some people who will be intellectually strong. So of course, um, what we talked about today, hopefully no one misunderstands it, when we're talking about success and what success is, it doesn't mean, I told you, you could be successful here and there. But I'm trying to do what? Emphasize what is more important. That in the case of some people, they cannot be successful here. So what do you do? So if you can be successful in the dunya and in the akhirah, then please, by all means, be. Because right? then you'll have maybe energy and power to be able to do more good. But what is the greater success? That's what we want to keep in mind. The greater success is the success of the akhirah. Right? And if, this, if we need to talk about this more, inshallah, let me know, inshallah, because we could kind of address it so that we have a balance of a balance understanding. Yeah. Hadith number 13. So we talked about it early on, inshallah. So, I mean, in case kind of you understand, want to understand this hadith a little bit better, you could go to the explanation in the book and you can also, inshallah, uh, go to the explanation in the lecture, inshallah. So just to understand why we said it's uh, of iman, not of material uh, strength. Allah so I have something here I'm trying to understand. Um, regarding Ibn Habban narration, provision without you asking, is this the meaning of ayah 2.3? Spend of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Uh, okay. I.e. provision, if we want it and long for it, it's not blessed. And what is spent from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not accept it. How to purify our hearts to not yearn for some worldly provisions we need. Look, there's there's... You need, you need money. It's not like you're going to stop needing money. It's not going to stop having this. It's not, your heart is not going to stop leaning towards the dunya. It's not the issue here. It's that you catch it as this is happening, and you say, no, Allah Azza wa Jal is better and more sufficient. I don't, I'm not going to be reliant on it. I'm not going to be swayed by it. Let it come. You, know, you could be a millionaire. You know, wasn't Uthman ibn Affan rich? Abdurrahman ibn Awf, wasn't he not rich? Abu Bakr, did he not have money to give? Okay, the, were they immersed in the dunya? Were they reliant on it? 
they could give it all away. So they weren't attached. So you could seek it, but you're not attached to it, and you can give it away. How do you teach yourself not to, be, to yearn for it is to constantly remind yourself that it's not this thing that is making you rich. It's Allah. Huh? It's not the money. It's not the check. It's not your employer that is making you rich. It's Allah Azza wa Jal. He could make you rich in other ways. He can just give you money, right? It doesn't really happen often, but it can. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is enriching you. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is blessing you. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is providing for you. And you take also some of that money and you give it away for Allah. This is also how you lean, teach yourself not to yearn for it. Here it comes and here it goes. Allah. Here it comes and here it goes for Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know that Allah Azza wa Jal, right? As he gave this, he can give, give something else. So you don't become dependent on it. Right? You see, you understand it as replaceable. Right? And not uh, uh, um, central. That's, that's, that's how you deal with it, right? And I hope that un- kind of answers your question. That's the best I can do. Uh, how to purify love in the heart to have ma'rifah of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you want to know Allah Azza wa Jal more, you got to study. You're going to study first. You're just not going to know him just because you're worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. No. So if you want to know Allah Azza wa Jal more, you need to study and then you take what you've studied and you apply it in worship. And that worship will open additional doors of knowledge. And then you go back and study more. And you take that and you worship Allah using that. And that will open even more and more doors to Allah Azza wa And as you do this, your love for Allah will increase and you know Allah better and better. So this is how it happens. Worship on its own doesn't work. Knowledge on its own doesn't work. Not until you combine both of them, you know and you do and you do and you know and they both feed each other and both of them enhance your knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal and enhance your love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Okay. Um, we're done online? Okay. Anyone here, inshallah, you have anything you want to add? We're done, alhamdulillah. Tayyip. InshaAllah, see you next week. Bi idhnillah Azza wa Jal. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Ashadu illa ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته